I woke blinded by a sickly yellow overhead light, throwing the room into a dim, pitch-black shade in all but where I was lying. Blinking frantically, I cleared the blurriness from my vision. I looked down. I was strapped tightly onto a steel operating table, naked the harsh, cold steel sticking tightly to my bare skin. Listening to my intuition's own creeping bewilderment, I cranked my head to the right. A silver panel of various knives, scalpels, and hooks laid in organized rows. I opened my mouth to speak. What the... My voice caught raspily. My voice cracked, dry. And I caught a sharp, stinging pain at the movement of my lips. My ears twitched to a faint, sneering chuckle that echoed and ran along the walls. I quickly swiveled my head farther, over to a tall, strange man, blanketed in the pitch black, just outside of the lamplight. A tall, hunched silhouette. From what could be seen, his back curled in a disfigured manner, his spine jutting out from his lab coat. The man then took a step headfirst into the light, revealing dark, misfigured eyes set rigidly and coldly on me. Realizing where I was, yet more so where I didn't know where I was, my heart had now pushed up into my throat, beating rapidly. The man gazed at me with pitch black eyes, sharp as the scalpels he routinely and methodically kept to a gleaming state. His gaunt face was cold, pale the skin of a sickly man. Most prominent besides his eyes was his long, curled nose. A thin, sharp bridge of a nose which jutted out like a curved bird's beak. I didn't know why I was on this table, why my mouth hurt like hell, or why I was even naked. All I knew was that I simply had to get out if I wanted to live to see another day. The man took two steps closer. The blood ran from my face and I ejected a blaring shout, yelling for dear life. Help! Someone help! The figure, stabbing eyes straight at me, still had a flat expression on his lips. His slanted, misfigured eyes peered at me behind thick lenses. I yelled out desperately for help again, hoping someone, anyone could hear me. Help! Please, can anyone hear me? Panicking, I tried to wrestle out of the straps containing me, shaking the operating table. I yelled and yelled until shouts trailed off into faint rasp, please, realizing there was no one near in this dark, cavernous chamber. I was all alone with this strange man, strapped against my will, rendered helpless on a steel operating table. I stopped shaking, figuring it was no use. Please. I don't know where I am. Let me go, please. I'm begging you. He fixed his steely glaze on me lying on the operation table with a harsh, soulless stare. Yet, one that had fixed their black eyes past me and into my rapidly beating heart. Moments went by before he opened his mouth. From his thin, pursed lips, he spoke in a shrill, coarse voice. It cracked like sharp gravel, coarse and gritted. Hey, Jeff. I was wondering when you'd wake up from your wisdom tooth removal. That anesthetic really did do a number on you, huh? I think I should have told you beforehand that the anesthetic can cause minor short-term memory loss and paranoia. Anyways, he coughed loudly, clearing his throat. His voice then cleared into a normal tone. You shouldn't get going. I legally can't leave the workplace until I'm done, and my daughter has a piano recital at nine, and I really can't miss another one. My wife would kill me. The tone in his voice and his eyes cracked like a whip at the word kill. He looked at me and broke off into a hearty laugh. You know, happy wife, happy life, am I right? The man patted me on the shoulder and leaned in, giving me a warm, reassuring smile. He lifted my lips up with his fingers. His white latex glove surprisingly bloodied from just a wisdom tooth removal. He lathered the inside of my gums with his bloodied gloves, rubbing off the iron-rich taste of blood, as well as a faint, sick sweetness that lingered from his fingers. Man, I did pretty good, even if I do say so myself. The man looked down at his hands and then at my wide, dumbfounded expression. 
Oh, don't worry. It's mostly strawberry jam. I just wear gloves to keep my hands from getting messy. He unfastened the leather straps tied tightly down on my chest, stomach, and legs. I swallowed a hard gust of air, my chest puffing out, relieved from the straps' tightening pressure. Here's your clothes. He tossed them nonchalantly at my face. Yeah, it's weird, I know. The new orthodontal protocol requires the patient to always be naked within the operation. I know, it's odd, but it's purely for sanitation reasons. Anyways, get dressed and get going, man. I'm on a rather tight schedule as it is.